Gender is a social construct, and like culture, trends, and social norms, our definition of gender is rooted firmly on the society we live in. For over 300 years, the Philippines is dominated by institutions that exclude homosexuality. The Western Catholic teachings of man and woman dichotomy has dictated how we perceive gender. It was not until the gender revolution in the 60s and 70s that finally there was a hope in shifting the rigged and traditional beliefs of old. Through the efforts of the media, activists, and liberal professors who wanted to bring about this change and speak out against the repressive grip of conservative Christianity, which led to the increased rise of the significance of accepting gays into the community. The question is, how can something so controversial have become now a part of our normal everyday lives? The term gay or bakla is almost immediately associated with feminine character. It could be someone you know, it could be your brother, cousin, uncle, or anyone. The thing is that this group of people make up a significant minority in our society. But that doesn't mean that they are few in number, they do not exist. They have stories, experiences, sufferings, dreams, and aspirations, like all people from all walks of life. The word gay itself is an offensive term having various associations dealing with sexual misconduct since the 17th century. Even backline Filipino and Bayot and Cebuano term are used as something derogatory, often associated with being weak, fearful, confused, or coward. There are various misunderstandings with regards to gay people. Sometimes they are even thought of as trans women or transgender. And a symbol as instances like this, it is clear that this lack of knowledge is what saves bigotry and close-mindedness. Going back to the pre-colonial Philippines, effeminate men were accepted in society. Homosexual relations in both sexes were common and bore no controversy. They were even held in high regard and performed duties as spiritual leaders known as babaylan, katalonan, and shamans. When Father Francisco Alcina, a Spanish historian and a Jesuit missionary visited the country in the 17th century, he found shamans who were so effeminate he thought that they were women only to find out they were men. Asog are known as may babaylan who were free to have homosexual relations without societal judgment. The Asog were not cross-dressers, however, they were gender-crossers as they were granted the same spiritual recognition as the female babaylan. The Asog lead the revolts against the oppression of the Spanish colonial period with various incantations to boost the revolt's strength. Despite the permissiveness of gender variances of our pre-colonial past, the influence brought by the colonizers, the Spanish, then the Americans with their religious doctrines, forever changed social norms. The Americans introduced the idea that homosexuality was a sickness that needs to be treated. While the Spanish enforced strict religious doctrines that outlaws homosexuality and even diminished the role of women by establishing a patriarchal society. They were the ones who further reinforced Western conceptualizations of social constructs, cementing it in formal education. These influences have left this rigged mentality cultivating exclusiveness, disapproval, and rejection of the third sex. One way this is evident is through stereotyping. Gays are often thought of as carefree and happy-go-luckies who have no great ambition or desire in life. Another common stereotype of a bakla is a parlorista, a flamboyant, comp cross-dresser who works in a beauty salon. This is not true as in reality, the bakla thrives in numerous sectors of society. From the lower to the upper levels, some even have become CEOs and businessmen, innovators and successful people. Gregory Candana is the first Filipino to lead as the chairperson of the National Council of Asian Pacific Americans. He is the youngest ever executive director of the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance and Institute for Asian Pacific American Leadership and Advancement, and also the first openly gay person elected to the position.
the media is the most powerful tool in creating change. With hundreds of millions of consumers looking at the phones or televisions at any given time, over the last few decades, the media have become more and more tolerant of them, from TV shows to movies, and even the celebrities featuring themselves on talk shows are either gays, lesbian, and transgenders. You have Netflix with their own devoted LGBTQ films. Even popular TV shows such as Game of Thrones has had its first show of homosexuality. The Filipino movies are not exemption either. You have the Panty Sisters, Violet Benjamin, and Hanging Out. In the comedic film of Panty Sisters, it also seems to introduce terms such as Demi Girl. Hindi rin. Hindi ka babae, hindi ka lalaki, hindi ka bakla. Ano ka? Anak, tumboy ka? Anaki. Pero ang totoo niyan, isa akong Demi Girl. Babae na may kuting pagkalalaki. This is an important thing, as the representation in the media has given voice to the historically voiceless and emotionally repressed. It is the media that conditions our minds what is normal and what is trending, what is good or what is bad, and those who control the media and the stories can control the norms and beliefs in society. One thing that the LGBTQ gays can teach us aside from their joyous mood and their love on, they can teach us to struggle. It is never easy to belong to a minority where your thoughts and feelings are often shunned or invalidated by the rest. What's a faggot? And when you find someone you love, someone who understands you, knows what you feel, and shares the same sentiment as you, it is frustrating to see that you too only end up being judged by the rest of society just because you are different. Many individuals who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer, and with other non heterosexual orientations experience stigma, prejudice, and discrimination because of their sexuality. According to minority stress and identity development theories, these experiences can contribute to difficulties with self-acceptance of sexuality. Lower self-acceptance is considered a risk factor for adverse mental health outcomes. Data also shows that gay men generally experience two types of violent victimization. Criminal violence based on the sexual minority status and violence from an intimate male partner. Another thing to be concerned about is many gay people are prohibited in seeking healthcare because of discrimination and inequality. Discrimination in healthcare settings endangers LGBTQ people's lives through delays or denials of medically necessary care. For example, after one patient reached HIV, disclosed to hospital that he had sex with other men. The hospital staff refused to provide his HIV medication. It is also well documented that men who have sex with other men at an increased risk of HIV infection. In 2006, this accounted for 48% of the more than 1 million people living with HIV in the United States and accounted for 53% of all newly diagnosed HIV infections in the United States alone. Marriage. Pero ang sagot ni Sanangani Congressman Manny Pacquiao ang pinaka-pinagpiestahan sa social media. As Christian, bawal naman yung uh, same-sex marriage. Ginawa ang babae para sa lalaki, ginawa ang lalaki para sa babae. Common sense lang. Magkakita ka ba ng any animals na lalaki sa lalaki o babae sa babae? Mas mabuti pa yung hayop. <laughs> Marunong kumikilala kung lalaki o lalaki, babae, babae. Ngayon, kung halaki sa lalaki o babae sa babae, mas pasahod pa sa ayaw ng tao. O, oh, diba? Ang ayaw lang, hindi pwede, hindi talaga mong pwede okay. magsama ang lalaki sa lalaki. Pero, I'm not condemning. Ha? I'm not condemning them. Hindi lang kung marriage. Yung marriage lang yung committing sin against God. The Philippines is a Christian country with 80% of its population being Catholic. Church doctrine officially tolerates persons with such orientations but condemns homosexual activity as intrinsically disordered. This creates a problem for discrimination and as a result, homosexual youth in particular are at higher risk for suicide, depression, and substance abuse than their heterosexual peers. To make matters worse, the country is composed of a significant population of Muslims in the South. 
In Islam, homosexuality is almost a death penalty. In December 2004, Marawi City banned gays from going out in public wearing female attire, makeup, earrings, or other ornaments to express their inclinations for femininity. The law passed by the Marawi City Council also bans skin-tight blue jeans, tube tops, and other skimpy attire. Fast forward to the five-month occupation by a pro-ISIS group that killed civilians and destroyed homes, many in the LGBTQ community say that the city is now a dangerous place for them. Historically, feminized men were also persecuted harshly by Islamic ethnic groups in Mindanao. In Historia de las Islas de Mindanao, published 1667, the Spanish priest Francisco Combes records that their unnatural crime was published by the Muslim peoples in Mindanao with death by burning or drowning and that their houses and property were also burned as they believed that it was contagious. Multiple studies have shown that depression and anxiety affect gay men at a higher rate than the general population and are often more severe for men who remain in the closet. Culturally sensitive mental health services that specifically target gay men have been shown to be more effective in the prevention, early detection, and treatment of these conditions. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people are more likely to experience intolerance, discrimination, harassment, and the threat of violence due to their sexual orientation than those that identify themselves as heterosexual. This is due to homophobia, the fear or hatred of homosexuality. All too often, schools are not the safe spaces they should be for the LGBT youth who experience bullying and harassment at alarming rates. Studies show that between 78% and 86% of LGBT students experience verbal harassment in their schools because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. Nearly a quarter of LGBT students report being physically attacked in school. These acts of bullying were not only student-to-student -student incidents. In a national survey, nearly a third of transgender respondents reported being verbally harassed by teachers or staff in a K-12 school. 5% reported being physically assaulted by these adults, and 3% reported being sexually assaulted. Unfortunately, many LGBT youth not only face danger in the classroom, but also lack support in their own homes. Half of LGBT youth experience a negative reaction from their parents when they come out of the closet and disclose their sexual orientation or gender identity. Young people who come out to their parents are vulnerable to rejection and are at an increased risk of victimization with significant long-term health consequences. Family rejection is correlated with increased depression, suicidal behavior, substance abuse, and HIV risk in LGBT youth. LGBT young adults who lack family support are more than eight times more likely to attempt suicide, nearly six times more likely to report high levels of depression, and are more than three times likely to use illegal substance or engage in unprotected sex. The LGBT Non-Discrimination Policy Resolution was released on October 11 by the Psychological Association of the Philippines in response to overwhelming letters, calls, and ethic complaints against a certified psychologist who recommended conversion therapy for children who come out as gay or lesbian to achieve a happy family life. This policy statement affirmed the inherent dignity and equality of LGBT individuals as well as the right to not be discriminated against based on their sexual orientation. In response to this, the Anti-Discrimination Bill, otherwise known as the Anti-Soji Discrimination Act, would be effective in addressing the issues degrading not just the LGBTQ plus community, but every individual as well. Gay men and lesbians were recently invited by Ernesto Torres, the spokesman of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, where he emphasized that giving equal opportunity to prospective soldiers proves the Philippines has zero tolerance for discrimination within the military ranks. This small triumph of development will fall short because Torres emphasized 
that all military personnel should adhere to the military's codes of ethics and observe proper decorum, which means openly gay men and lesbians and those who cross-dress can be dishonorably discharged. In other words, gays and lesbians must therefore hide their sexuality in order to remain there. Torres' invitation came against the backdrop of considerable activism by lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender groups in the Philippines who have been clamoring for the passage of the anti-discrimination bill pending in Congress. LGBT groups have welcomed the statement from the AFP as a sign that there is still hope that LGBT rights will be recognized and protected in the Philippines. Angie Umbach of Rainbow Rights AFP acknowledges once again the vital role of every Filipino, regardless of sex or sexual orientation, is to serve and defend our country. It may take a while for structures and policies to be corrected and attuned, but the open-mindedness of AFP leadership to embrace the principles of respect and equality already sends a clear message that the LGBT can march in its ranks. Although the invitation is seen as a step forward for LGBT rights, activists will continue to campaign for the removal of discriminatory provisions addressing homosexuality in the AFP Code of Ethics. Acceptance of homosexuality may be increasing, but it is still a constant challenge for young gay individuals to be themselves in a society that considers them outside the norm. Prevailing ideas that see man and a woman as a static sex anchored strictly on biological sex is a result of social constructs and these standards are a worthy position that are hammered into our heads until we are convinced that what we are thinking is wrong. It exists only because we cannot see beyond our own perception and because we neglect our own ability to exercise free thinking. Until we can be free from the social constructs set by the rigid traditions of the old, not only do we deny rights and liberties to minorities but also hamper society's realization of its true potential as other countries around the world are already accepting diversity. We have so much to gain from learning and working to our differences. We should realize that integrity, kindness, and strength of character are more important than the characteristics of our own genitals. We can only think of something strange because we are not familiar with it. The thing about love is not that it's not about witty lines or charms, but rather it is about revealing one's sexuality, an inner part of oneself. Unfortunately enough, we cannot decide who we love. We should not confine people to the edges of society just because they are different. If one is to carefully dissect the true meaning of love, it means to accept regardless of one's flaws. In Catholic teachings, Jesus tells us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, meaning to say, it should not be an excuse to exclude someone just because they are different. We may not be able to build a perfect society, but for sure, we can create a more inclusive one. One that is not plagued by rigid beliefs and constricted liberties that handicaps the potential of every person. Gays are valid. They are people and they deserve rights and recognition, just like everyone else.